Now we hear plenty about the big successes in Korean cinema, owed to my father being the most recent example. But what about the big productions that fail to make a hit? There are rising concerns that the industry may be focusing too much on expensive and risky productions. Our film critic Pierce Conran joins us today to talk about more about this issue. Good afternoon, Pierce. Good afternoon to you. So, how bad would you say the situation is now? Um, well, it's it's a difficult issue to to really kind of uh, explain because it's 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 a big industry. There's a lot of films, a lot of money flowing through. Mm -hmm. but to give kind of an overview, a picture of that, you have an industry that's been doing very well over the last few years. We're hearing about big films like uh, Ode to My Father and Roaring Currents, and indeed there's been a lot of money kind of being made. These like big figures. But if we look at like a, a year or two ago, uh, it's just like in 2013, it was a very good year. And there was about a 15% rate of return, so it was it was the biggest year ever for Korean films mm -hmm. in terms of like the the total gross. But 15% of that was actually profits. So that was very impressive. Mm -hmm. Last year was one of the biggest years ever for Korean films, but the rate of profit was only 0.3%. 0.3, not 3%. Yeah. 0.3%, huh. um, which is obviously very low. <laughs> very low. It's negligible. And what that means is that it, it masks a big issue. You have Roaring Currents, which made you know 120 million dollars. You have Oh to My Father, which just broke $100 million, and the first two Korean films to ever do that. And that's mm -hmm. very impressive and it's wonderful, particularly for the films, uh, the same producer behind those CJ Entertainment. But uh, if you have a 0.3% rate of return on the entire industry, what that means is that a lot of films are posting huge losses, and this is the problem. Right. Most films lose money, and a lot of them are losing not just small amounts, they're losing their some devastating losses. So what were some of the big flops last year that we didn't really uh, that didn't really garner people's attention? Well, I mean, there were honestly too many films that, that that failed to mention here. But the ones in terms of the, the ones that lost the most in a dollar amount, those would include films like uh, No Tears for the Dead, which was the uh, hitman film with uh, Chang Dong Gun, which was uh, the same filmmaker who made The Man from Nowhere, which was a huge hit a few years ago. But this one, it made about four million dollars, mm -hmm. even less than that in Korea. Uh, Hemu was uh, another kind of film that was a huge film, but uh, didn't do very well. It made twelve million dollars and box office receipts. The Huntresses, which was kind of a, a Charlie's Angels style Joseon period film, uh, made about $3.5 million. And The Royal Taylor, another period film, it's about 6.2. Now all those four films cost about $10 million to produce. Mm -hmm. And to kind of give some context to those figures, um, typically when uh, when a film grosses money, uh, it only gets half of that back. Half of that will stay with the theater. Mm -hmm. So uh, th then so suddenly those numbers look a little more troubling. Right, and also they have to distrib distribute to, even with the half of what they get, it's not all the net profit that they get, of course, obviously. Uh, exactly, yeah. And then of course there's the P&A, the production and advertisement budgets, which are on top of the, the, the 10 million I, I've said. Right, so what kind of a loss could these uh, films be looking at in terms of numbers then? Well, to take as an example, no tier for the Dead, which I'm, I'm thinking is probably the film that lost the most money last year. So that, and it's a film that shot about 10, cost about 10 million to make, partly because they shot a lot of that in America. Mm. And uh, so the film had receipts of under 4 million. And uh, if we include the PNA costs, the total negative cost of the film is going to be around 11.5 or 12 million dollars. And so, you know, if, like, we have 3.7 million box office returns, and maybe half of that is actually goes back to the studio. So mm -hmm. we're looking at you know, $1.9 million, and suddenly you're looking at a loss of, uh, of almost $10 million. It's a, it's a negative return of almost 85%. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, there is some more money to be made in the physical market and on VOD, but in Korea, the vast majority of sales are still theatrical. Of course. One other point with this particular film is that it's a CJ film, and CJ Entertainment are affiliated with CJ, CGV Cinemas, the largest exhibitor in the country, so of course, I can't be sure of the figures. It's, it's all complete speculation on my part, but it's mm -hmm. Certainly lost a lot of money. And you were telling me earlier that this year is no different. At least for now, it looks like there's a big period film coming out this week, or it came out this week, and mm -hmm. you said it was off to a bad start. Uh, yeah, so that would be Empire of Lust, uh, which is already the second P second Joseon era film of the year. And uh, there's going to be yeah, there's going to be a lot more to come, but this one's off to a terrible start. It's uh, it opened uh, yesterday, and uh, it made about half a million dollars, a little less than that. And uh, to kind of put that in context, No Tears for the Dead uh, opened, you know, with one million dollars on its opening day. So uh, we're, you know, that's that's 
pretty so troubling. This is the one with uh, Shin Hagyun? Yes, with uh, Shin Hagyun and okay. Jang Hyuk as well as uh, Kang Han Il and Kang Hana. And uh, it's a film that uh, you know could have been interesting. It's set at the very beginning of the Joseon dynasty, so during the first the first king's reign, mm -hmm. and kind of a, it's a tale of kind of a kind of the intrigue of uh, of someone who wants kind of to take over the throne and also kind of an erotic thriller at the same time. So, what do you think the problem, if we may say, is with uh, with this film? Uh, in this particular example, I mean, personally, I'll say that I, I really don't care for the film, and I think I'm not alone. The the, the critical response has been pretty pretty damning so far, mm -hmm. and uh, I also don't think the film seemed that appealing. The elements are there, but I don't think it was packaged all that well. Perhaps people who have seen the trailer might agree that it didn't really look all that appealing and uh, also we have had so many period films and a lot of them have you know now are not doing that well anymore mm -hmm. so uh, we had a Det detective K which did well earlier this year but you know that was a sequel to a well-liked film so it had a better chance but then the royal taylor which was uh, in december was one previous to that and that was a, another big loss so i think there's kind of some fatigue has begun to set in and audiences are getting a little tired of seeing the same thing and uh, but yeah period films we include not just the joseon films but anything that's got a period setting right. we've already had uh five in the first 64 days of the year which is of you this know, year yeah huh. so we've had in including detective k and uh, empire of lust there was also chronicle of blood merchant gangnam blues and of Wow, I mean, that's quite a number. Five period films in the first 64 days. I mean, pre period films, to begin with, they are pretty pricey because of the costumes and everything. But besides the costs of making the film, what would you say are some of the other problems that may have been associated with this um, big flop in period films? Uh, so certainly the cost is kind of the big issue. These films are risky. They need to make much more money than more modestly bud budgeted productions. And I think the fact that so many of them are beginning to resemble each other is a problem, so they can't really differentiate them as well. But, um, you know, I mean, blockbusters don't always get critical acclaim. We accept that. That's okay, because they're mm -hmm. being made for a wider audience. But a lot of this year's crop have really fared quite poorly with critics, you know. I mean, Empire of Lust is not doing well. Ceci Bon, the same thing, and also not doing well with, uh, with audiences. Same can be said of Chronicle of Blood Merchants. And um, so, you know, there are fancy production uh, values in these films. They, they look fantastic, but uh, they cram in a lot of different genre codes because they're trying to appeal to the widest uh, audience possible. But it's, uh, it's just a little too much, and there's not really a script that's really uh, holding all that together. And that's really what's happened with Empire Blast. Mm -hmm. So how is the outlook for the rest of the year then? Well, there's plenty of uh, blockbusters on the way, a huge amount, and uh, some of them I'm, you know, I'm very excited about, and I'm really looking forward to seeing. But uh, at the same time, there are so many that it's there's there are bound to be a huge amount of casualties, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll see uh, about half a dozen more Joseon era films, lots of other kind of big action thrillers coming in the summer and later, and so if too many of these lose money, the industry might kind of begin to panic, and this is something that happened back in 2006, which was all which was the previous peak of the industry, and everything mm -hmm. was doing really well, people started making too many big budget films and then the industry crashed and everyone panicked. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that uh, that was a lesson learned, but uh, it's, looking, it's looking a little, little, little dicey right now. Okay. All right. Uh, that's unfortunately all the time we have for today. Thank you very much, Pierce, for coming in and sharing your story with us. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.